Hi, my name's Cameron Carlos from the Anime Location TV. I'm here at ColossalCon 2017 with my good pal, Mr. Charles Dunbar. How are you doing? Oh, I'm here. It's 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 another Colossal Con. Woo! <laughs> Alrighty. So, what have you been up to, and what's new with you over the past year? What isn't new with me over the past year? I tried to launch a YouTube channel, and it didn't really work out. So, I had to. I've been so busy. I mean, like, I've got this year. Last year, I did 27 cons. This year, I'm doing 27 or 28 cons, and I'm slowly going insane. That's it. That's what's new with me. I'm slowly going insane. <laughs> All right. So, what are your fondest memories of your trip to Japan? Oh, the greatest thing I ever did in Japan, carrying that shrine. Get a half-ton shrine, put it on your back, get 24 other people, throw in some whiskey and soda and a bunch of food, and you are going to have the time of your life. <laughs> that is the one thing I remember the most. But it's just like, you know, just being there, the idea that I could go to Japan and I could experience a lot of things. I didn't do a lot of touristy stuff. I just, I went with the float and tried to see how best to enjoy it and appreciate it. And that's what I really liked about it. Unlike anything else, uh, I, well, I didn't go for the for the for the fandom. I went for the people, and I came away from it with a great new respect and new appreciation for the people and the culture of Japan. And I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back in October, hopefully, and uh, and it's gonna be pretty awesome. I've always wanted to visit, so it was cool to hear the say like go for the people. Uh, right now, if you look online, Air Canada is doing New York to Tokyo special fares between November and April for about four hundred eighty-eight dollars round trip. Nice, nice. Yep. Pro tip from Charles. Sent, it was sent to me literally last week while I'm at Anime North. You want to go to Japan round trip from the cheap? Look at Air Canada right now. Alrighty, so uh, you just got done with one panel here at Colossal Con and you have some more coming up this weekend. What can fans expect when they come to one of your wonderful events? Me screaming at the audience and having fun doing it. <laughs> no, I just, I did two already. I mean, I, I did the first anime last night, which ironically, people were thinking it was a panel where for people would get up and talk about their first anime. No, I'm talking about 100 years of commercial animation in Japan. And I went down the list with that one. And then I just did one on Japanese religion, which is always fun because half the time, like I'll go to a con and a lot of people are gonna be interested in it. And half the time it's just like, eh, whatever. And it's really interesting to see how people engage and people enjoy it that that was a really good a really good turnout I just had because it's 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 1 p.m. on a Friday but people were really interested in learning the basics and looking how how Japanese religion uh, appears and is man is is adapted in media so for the rest of the weekend I've got one on magical girls I've got one on uh, Totoro and goddess culture I got one on persona and psychology I've got one on uh, yokai girls gone wild is kind of I'm ending with with my with two fun ones because yokai girls gone wild I have never done it here in the three years that's been a thing and I just really want to tell about a bunch of angry female yokai and then I'm ending it off with bad boys of anime tomorrow night because sometimes you just need to talk about why it's good to be bad it actually sounds like it's going to be a fun time. So, so again, talking about your panels, how do you maintain so much energy and ent entertainment when you come and host one of your uh, panels? I mean, like, considering you're a panelist and not a voice actor, and your panels are, like, brimming to the full, like, what's that like? Like, how do you keep it all going? Caffeine. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of caffeine. Alcohol. Sometimes that's in the caffeine. Uh, no, I always talk about the great joke is uh, there's a video of me floating around from my Kill a Kill panel at Anime Boston and I'm taking sips of this giant cup of Dunkin' Donuts. What people don't know is in that cup of Dunkin' Donuts was a large cup of coffee, three shots of espresso, and four fingers of vodka. And it's hard to maintain that level of energy, especially as you get older. Because I'm in my 30s now and I can't just, like when I started I was in my late 20s and I could just blast and I, I do and run through into it. Now it's like, nope, I I gotta do enough cardio, I've gotta drink enough caffeine, I've gotta get my energy going, I gotta have a good crowd, and I've had to take a lot of improv lessons. I've actually taken voice acting lessons. A couple of years ago, Crispin Freeman taught me how to talk from my diaphragm, and it's been the greatest thing ever because now I don't throw my shoulders out anymore. So I've had to do a lot of like of like acting training and a lot of endurance training because it's not easy to present the way I do. I have to be really excited about what I'm talking about. I have to have a good working knowledge of what I'm talking about. I have to be able to recall that information on command. And if I can do all of those things, then the panel ends up being fantastic. If I, if one of those things goes out of alignment, it, it can actually be quite disastrous. And people like, there's, it's, I view it as performance art. I've always viewed panels as performance art. Uh, and if it's performance art where you can learn something about it, fantastic. But it's always been performance art first and foremost. And that's one of the reasons why when I do a panel like the one I just did, I am high energy. 
Well, we appreciate it because it shows you have the passion for what you do. So, uh, would there be a way for you to fuse anime and politics into one of your panels? I already do. Uh, whenever I talk about Shinto, I like to bring up I like to bring up uh, state Shinto and the um, the uh, political the uh, the religious arm of the Japanese government. Like lately, one of the biggest things that's been popping up in the news lately is Jinjo Honsho, the organization of Shinto shrines, has been putting out a lot of posters all over Japan that say "Show your Japanese pride." Now Ooh. there was a lot of controversy because they used a Chinese actress, but. <laughs> The real thing that was getting me is Jinjo Honcho is essentially, it's a propaganda branch. Yeah. They represent only about 40 to 45% of the shrines. And a lot of Jinjo Honcho was built around this idea that nationalism and the state uh, the state organization is important. So whenever I see things like that, I get a little wary and then I have to turn around and I have to talk about it. I'm seeing a lot of that. I've been seeing a lot of that with the new nationalist movement popping up in Japan of late. Yeah. Uh, Shinzo Abe, and when it was revealed he belonged to that Shinto organization a couple of years ago. Jake Adelstein wrote a great article on it for uh, Daily Beast. Uh, these are things that you can watch out for. You can put politics in anime because you, you can look at how the imperial propaganda machine works. You can look at how, in some cases, I remember one of the great criticisms, there were a couple of anime that came out a few years ago, where the criticism was, this is the shrine organization teaching people how to go to shrines, and why would they be doing that? And it's there, it's not overt, it's not gonna slam you in the face, but there's a lot that goes in there. I mean, you can even go back to look at Mobile Suit Gundam as a criticism of Nazi <laughs> Germany. So, yeah, the Zeons are space Nazis. It's not news to anyone, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. So, it's possible to do a politics panel. I don't like doing them. Uh, I was a political firebrand in my youth, so I don't like doing politics panels anymore because I will get really, really excited about it. And then I'm gonna start saying, provocative things and I don't want to do that at a con. Yeah. I come to the con to teach and have fun. Right. I can spend the rest of my time yelling about it. <laughs> so actually going along with politics and stuff, what, what's your take on the imperial daughter being told that if she marries a commoner she'll lose her status? And? And? There's no point. And? She can do whoever she wants. Look at William and Kate. Yep. I mean, Japan should learn about what happened when Princess Diana was forced to marry, when, when Prince Charles was forced to marry Princess Diana when he wanted to marry Camilla Parker Bowles. I'm okay with this idea of, okay. of her stepping down yeah. because it shows love, it shows devotion. And I mean, okay, you've got Imperial Shinto, which you need to keep it going. The Yamato have been there for a long time. But at the same time, it's about love, it's about community, it's about family. Why deny the Imperial daughter that right? Why tell her she can't do it? One of the things I like about, about, uh, about Emperor Akihito is that he's really made great strides yeah. in bringing the ritual and the tradition out while arguing for a new vision of it. And I'm glad that they're, letting, that they're gonna let him retire. He, he wants to retire because he's lived a good life and he wants to step back and enjoy the rest of his time with his family. He's earned it. So let him do it. Let the princess marry for love. You know what? It's not going to change her DNA. It's not going to change that people are going to are still going to look at her and say this is beloved. None of that's going to matter in the end. As long as there's love there, that's all that I care about. It's an awesome message that love is the most important part. So, uh, are there any current projects you want your fans to know about at this time? Like any new books or any oh. new trips? Oh, no, no. I, I put out three books this year. I put out Pokemon Mythology, um, Yoka, Basic Yokai Gaku, and Goddesses and Sacrificial Kings that are dealing again with my passions. One is about Goddess Mythology in Studio Ghibli. Uh, Pokemon Mythology was based on that Playboy article I wrote two years ago. <laughs> and. Um, Basic Yokai Gaku was a way to just explain Yokai lore to, to, the, to the anime fans without having to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig through lots of uh, academia. I tried to give it as much justice as possible. I'm also working on some new books. I should have a book based on my uh, Kami Kakushi, my Taken by the Gods panel. There should be a book for that out coming soon. I should have uh, a book for uh, Dead for my Afterlives panel coming out soon. And I'm eventually, at the end of this year, going to finish uh, Mononoke Mo Problems, which is my grand yokai book. I want to have that one out by the end of the year. I also have a YouTube channel. It's just, you look for Tengu Talks, and I'm going to start turning a lot of my panels into short form video essays just as soon as I stop going to cons long enough to actually sit down and do it. <laughs> because, like, when you go to a con every other week, you don't have time to shoot and edit. I've got stuff that I shot back in February that I haven't finished yet because I've been spending all of my time going to conventions. So there's that. And also I have a, I just finished and started doing a new panel on the history of Christianity in Japan. Ooh. I found it to be fascinating and I just started work on that recently. Uh, panel debuted at 
Anime Boston. I did it at Anime North. I'm going to be doing it at Anime Next. So that's just another one that it, it felt it was time to sit down and actually break this down for fans who may or may not understand it. A lot of people don't know that it's Portuguese that brought it over. Portuguese brought it over. Oh, no, no. It's like last year Silence comes out last year. Scorsese finally gets right to do Silence. And the way, how do I describe it? Spider-Man and Kylo Ren go to Japan looking for Qui-Gon Jinn, discover that he has been taken by the Japanese, and then they have a long philosophical, uh, philosophical quandary. Someone dies, someone renounces their faith, and everyone lives in Japan for happily ever after. It was actually a pretty fascinating take, and I'm sitting in the movie watching it, and that's when I started to really give thought to it, and I've read a bunch of really great books on the subject. In fact, Patrick Drazen's got one coming out this year on uh, Christianity and anime, and I found uh, Jonathan Clements just put out Christ Samurai, which is about the Shima rebellion which is one of it's considered in Japanese history as the last great Christian rebellion when it was a lot of farmers really angry but it shows how how Christianity was one of the major driving forces behind the Sakoku behind the yeah the the withdrawal and there's a lot of information to cover so I spent some time researching it and I'm hoping to do it more justice the more I give the panel Dude, that sounds awesome so uh, how can fans keep up with you online and a final message for all your wonderful fans well, you can still find me on facebook.com backslash study of anime. That's where I do all of my stuff. My actual study of anime page is currently being taken over by the ODU Anime Club because I just don't have the time to sit and write articles anymore when I'm working on books and videos. You can find Tengu Talks on eBay, I'm not eBay, on YouTube, where you can find uh, me doing videos right now. There's a great interview with John Swayze on there where we talk about the boy and the beast and the next Miyazaki. Yeah. I have one on there where I talk about Nausicaa's journey as a neo-pagan goddess and I have one where I completely rip apart Babar the Little Elephant. And um, <laughs> On top of that, you can find me there. You can still email me through Study of Anime. And my Patreon's doing quite well. People are still donating to help me make more lectures. And yeah, if you see me at a con, I periodically post my con schedule. So my next few shows are going to be Anime Next. I'm going to be at um, JFAX in Grand Rapids. I'm going to be at Kineticon and Glass City Con and Con Bravo up in Hamilton, Ontario. And then August happens and it goes crazy. So <laughs> yeah, just keep an eye on the Facebook group. And uh, just come out and say hi. I often like to come to shows where people just want to sit around and say hi because it's it, it, it reminds me that fandom's awesome and fandom is one thing that I've always it's always created and sustained me. Every year I'm saying I'm going to retire because the grind gets to be too much and every year some fans do something so awesome that I just can't do it. Thanks so much for coming and talking with us, Charles. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, this is great. It's like it's Friday and all my stuff's done. Like now I can I can go to the water park for a couple of hours and then tomorrow I just go I, I put on my my punk rock rose quartz outfit and just go panels all day. All right, thanks again, Charles. It's wonderful. Okay. Peace, peace, peace.